Good afternoon everyone, welcome to Let's Shop Cake Live with me Tracy Mann. So yes, we're not here in the morning, we are here in the afternoon today. So good afternoon everyone, it is 12.30 uh, and I'm delighted to be back here again on Let's Shop Cake Live. So um, I had a slight delay this morning um, doing a live because I've been to a wedding this morning so I'm fitting it in around that really. But we are now live and we're going to do our programme just as we would normally do but at 10 o'clock in the morning uh, we're going to be doing it at 12.30. So if you've missed it, you will still be able to watch it back on all the usual places, which includes here on Facebook and also on YouTube as well. So if you miss it, there will be an opportunity to watch it back. It's one of those days out there today where you think, well, it's just lovely out there. And uh, then you go outside and realise it's completely freezing. So... <laughs> Uh, hopefully you're indoors and wrapped up warm and you're getting ready to watch our programme today. So we've got lots of new things coming up. So I haven't been live since Easter. So there are some new things that for me to show you today, including some new cookie cutters, um, new ideas, new classes. Very important. Lots of new classes coming up as well. So we're going to run through all of those. Um, and talk about what's going to be coming up over the next few weeks. So I was going to show you a picture of the wedding cake I've done this morning, but I can't because I haven't got it on my phone. So that will go up later on anyway. So uh, Easter's now behind us in a distant memory. And we'll now move on to some other ideas for cake decorating before we start approaching things like Father's Day. And then we go into summer holidays where we will shut temporarily um, for a little while while we deal with the weddings and everything else and then be back again before you know it it's going to be Christmas and it comes around very quickly <laughs> whether you like it or not uh, we will be going up there not that I'm wearing red to celebrate Christmas or anything it's just what I happened to grab from the wardrobe this morning <laughs> so there we go um, so we're going to have a look at the cake school shortly we're going to have a run through some of the new classes so we've got a lot of new stuff coming up on the cake school some of you may have seen it already on Instagram um, and Facebook some of you may have seen it if you're in the gold membership group in my little um, school group you may have seen those already but for everybody else I am going to introduce you to my new classes uh, which you can have a look at um, and we've got an awful lot of new stuff coming up I've been filming manically so there is going to be a lot of new stuff coming up on the cake school shortly um, including some Swiss meringue buttercream some cupcake bouquets and also um, we're now doing painted cake toppers so lots of things going on so we are live this morning at 12 30 here we are uh, well done for everybody that's made it for 12 30 i'm very impressed um if you want to ask any questions while i'm live then do please let me know if you have watched this later on and you want to ask some questions then just get in contact with me by the website let's shop cake live co uk go to the inquiry form send me a message and i will more than happily try and help you <laughs> that's the idea anyway so let's take a look at the cake school first so we've got lots of new things coming up on the cake school so for those of you that don't know, I have a cake school as well as my Let's Shop Cake Live. And this is where I host all of my classes, including lots and lots of painting classes, which is the main thing we do. But at the moment, we are moving into another territory. We have got a new class out today. Do you know what? I can't remember if I put it on here or not. We've got a wisteria painting class out today. There it is. Perfect. Right. So later today... We have got this cake coming out as a new class. Now, the focus on this class is that bottom tier. So it's not going to show you how to assemble the whole wedding cake. It's going to focus solely on how to do the wisteria on the bottom of that wedding cake. So um, this is going to be included in gold and silver membership I had to think for a minute because it's a painting class so gold and silver membership will get this class later today um, and that will come up on their uh, teachable account for everybody else um, you can either buy the class by going to the cake school or of course you can join as a monthly member um, a gold membership gets you access to everything silver gets you access to all the cake painting uh, bronze gets you access to beginners uh, cake painting and then sugar craft it's sugar craft only so that's the wedding cakes um the, the royal icing i think for a minute then the burn cakes anything that we've done that isn't painting and cupcake bouquets so if you want to join sugar craft that's a 6.95 a month which is a bargain i mean that is literally a couple of couple of cups of coffee if you're lucky at starbucks isn't it it's that kind of thing if you put it in relation to that you are basically opening up a complete library of cake decorating for you to have a go at whenever you like so it's i think it's really good value um so that's available for you as well but this is our 
brand new one today but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some of the other ones that we've got coming up some of them I've got here um, some of them I have got photos of so let's see where we are here I am back again so um, we are entering a Swiss meringue buttercream phase <laughs> for those of you that are on my school um, and that is because uh, they are very popular at the moment and we already have one let me put we've got two actually what am I saying we've got two we've got a beginner's one but I've now put together a set of three let me just find this one on. if you see me pulling faces it's because I'm trying to look over my glasses right there we go so we have this one already on our school which is the cherries uh, Swiss meringue buttercream and we've now going to add two more classes to this particular class so this is going to be a set of three Swiss meringue buttercream classes and I've got two of them here with me so I'm going to show you those in just a second uh, one is um, I've not seen anything like it anywhere else that's what I like um, and that is based I'll show you this one first is based on the idea of for those of you that have Netflix Bridgerton for those of you that don't have Netflix we're talking about things like um, Jane Austen um, all that kind of I'm trying to think of the right word for it it's all that sort of uh, pride and prejudice type sort of feel stately home that kind of thing um, but I've used the palette or the colours of Bridgerton um, for those of you that have watched it it is a sort of a, um, a blue it tends to be lots of blues and lilacs um, and they have a very famous house in Bridgerton which actually you can go and see I believe it's in London so I have to pop up and see that um, which has wisteria over the front of it and that is the Bridgerton house that's where the Bridgertons live um, and I have now replicated that in a cake so I've decided that as the new season is coming out so the new season comes out on the 16th of May so that's when this cake project will be released I have done a themed cake because uh, I know that lots of other people appreciate it and actually what I've done is created a cake that you could do for anything without it being Bridgerton uh, it can just be for a, just a beautifully posh cake it's very nice so I have got it here with me I've also got a picture of it which I can put up if I'm very badly demonstrating it here. So here we go. So this is our Bridgerton Swiss meringue buttercream cake. I'm gonna hold it up nice and close. There you go, so you can see it. And it replicates the wisteria that's going around the outside edge. There we go, of the house, the Bridgerton house. Um, I've done that on there. Now this is Swiss meringue buttercream, okay? So that is little cameo that I've put on the front there because that kind of gives us the whole feeling of the program and also the um, the feeling of these uh, period dramas that's the word I was looking for period dramas so if you're like me and you like a good old period drama especially where Mr Darce is involved um, then I have got just the cake for you and I've really focused here on getting the palette particularly of this um, Bridgerton colours because it is lilac and powder blue um, so I'm going to show you throughout the whole course how to make Swiss meringue buttercream because it is completely different from anything else that you'll make um, how to cover a cake with it very important um, and then I've used a variety of different nozzles on here as you can see and for those of you that really enjoy royal icing this is actually very addictive and I love it I absolutely love it um, so if you are a fan of royal icing so if any of you have done my royal icing classes and you think oh gee I really did enjoy that you're going to enjoy this with the Swiss meringue buttercream because it is actually uh, very similar uh, it's a bit softer obviously but it does do some amazing stuff and um, I've loved doing this cake and I can't find anything else online that looks like this. So we've got a pretty unique tutorial here um, <laughs> for doing this, all the techniques that are involved in making the wisteria that goes around the cake and it's buttercream. So it's different. You can do it in sugar paste if you particularly want to and you'll, you'll understand that from, from what I say on the video. So if you feel that Swiss meringue buttercream is not really for you, but you fancy having a go in sugar paste, you can do that as well. So this is coming out on the 16th of May, which is the day that the next season of Bridgerton is coming out. Uh, as I say, if you are completely like, I don't know what she's talking about, it is a period drama. And that's how I would describe this cake. It's meant to replicate period dramas. And I think I've pretty much got it, but it is focused on Bridgerton because of the wisteria. So there we go. So that is part two of the Swiss meringue buttercream course that we've got coming out. So the Swiss meringue buttercream course, I'm gonna to have to put this down for a second. 
consists of three projects. So we have got the cherries, which I showed you at the start. We've got the Bridgerton, I keep calling it the Bridgerton one. <laughs> The period drama one um, coming out on the 16th of May and then in June we are going to be having this one which is the round heart shape one and do you know what I think I might be better off showing you under the other camera because it's front facing so let me put the other camera on there we go let's move that out of the way we don't want that in the way so this is another project that's going to be included in the Swiss meringue buttercream and this is a heart shape cake, as you can see. I'm going to just tip it slightly on its side there and you'll be able to see all the frills and all the work that I've done around the outside edge of this particular cake. There we go. You can see it all round there. It is. I love this cake. It's absolutely gorgeous. There you go. If I turn it round like so, you can see what's going on there so again it is a bit like royal icing it is piping and therefore guess who loves it that's me uh so i've put this <laughs> so this one again will be coming out like a part three for the swiss meringue buttercream um, and this one will be coming out in june so the cherries one is there already the bridgerton one will be coming out 16th of may this one will be coming out in june and at the end of it you will have a set of three cakes so for those of you that are signed up for gold or sugar craft, you will get access to these as they come out. For those of you that want to join, you can buy the course outright, but you will get those courses as they come out. Um, it's £60 for all three classes. Um, you can, of course, join as a member. In that case, if you're joining as a monthly member, then you must join as a gold or sugar craft member to get access to the Swiss Meringue Buttercream classes. Now, of course, for me, I am now in love with this because this is, as far as I'm concerned, royal icing, but it's literally royal icing with masses and masses of buttercream piping. So I have found my niche. I love it. <laughs> There's going to be a few more of these as well. But for the moment, we have one beginner's course, which again, you can sign up to any time and now a set of three. So that is going to be uh, what we're going to be having on these cakes. OK, so I'm just going to come back on screen there for a minute and I'm going to move this out of the way because the only slight problem with these is obviously me knocking them which is going to be something not as durable as the sugar paste so I'm going to put that over there out of my way um life expectancy someone's just asked about buttercream um buttercream you need to protect it from the sun you need to protect it these particular ones live a little bit more in the fridge um keep them in there although this one's been in my unit now for a week and it's fine yeah it's fine these aren't going to get eaten just remember that <laughs> um but normally about a week I'd say three to five days for buttercream um, for when you do it on a cake. Obviously, you can make buttercream and keep it three weeks, and that's absolutely fine. But with all the Swiss meringue buttercream course, all the information is on there, including the recipes that I've used, how to make it. So there is a big section on how to make the Swiss meringue buttercream. And then we move into the projects, the cherries, the Bridgerton one and the heart shaped one as well. So it is a set of three classes. So that is coming out shortly, as I say, 16th of May. Cherries is already there so if you want to have a go at that it's gold or sugar craft membership or buy the course itself but it is there now and we are promoting it quite heavily um, on instagram and facebook at the moment you'll see lots and lots of the the bridgerton-esque one appearing because it's obviously coming up to the event itself so um if that's what you're looking at then that it's coming now somebody else just asked about the guinea pig one which is behind me which I'm going to, I will leap up and get it. Let's let's be good here. Uh, this one is also coming out in May. I've got a little rush of them in May. Let's put that one on there. There it is. Oh no, I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> let's press the right button. Let's move that over there. So I've got a million things in my way there. There we go, that's better. So we've got a guinea pig class coming out. There we go. 11th of May, somebody said, so I'm assuming that's right. Um, and this is a lovely class. If anyone's got a guinea pig, now we used to have guinea pigs 
Um, and my kids love them, absolutely love them. And then Kelly became allergic to them. So <laughs> she didn't love them after that. Um, but we did have two guinea pigs. So I know they are such gorgeous characters. And if you know somebody who's got a guinea pig, then this is going to be a very fun cake to do because you've just got to follow the diagram and change the colours. So if you know someone who's got a guinea pig that's all ginger or someone who's got one who's black and white or there's so many different varieties of guinea pigs but they are so lovely and this is a really good angle to paint this particular guinea pig so um, easily transferable to other guinea pigs that's all I'm going to say he's got a lovely little face um, and if you want to have a go at the guinea pig then this one is going to be out on the 11th of May on the cake school and that will be available to gold and silver members because the silver members are the cake painters and the gold members are the ones that get access to to everything so you can either join for 12.50 and have access to it all or £10 a month and gain access to all the cake painting but that's the new cake paint that's coming out uh, on the 11th of May very exciting do love a good guinea pig so um, if anybody is feeling inspired to paint a guinea pig then we're going to have the course for you coming out and I'm busy painting and doing all sorts of bits and pieces at the moment we've got a massive project coming out with cake toppers and we've also got an enormous project coming out with a cupcake garden so we've got some very different projects coming out not projects that you can actually see anywhere else I've heavily researched Searched a lot of what I'm doing and I can't find any of the things that I'm doing um, anywhere else so I'm really pleased with what we've got coming out because it's all new and it's different um, we've also got another cupcake bouquet that's going to be coming out in July and I'm going to give you a little bit of a pre look at this one because it's not available yet um, but this one will be coming out in July and this one includes orchids and I'm going to be doing lots and lots of piping on orchids so I've now worked out how to do that really well so I'm happy with that this is a very much a pale yellow cream and ivory white wedding um, and this is a bouquet that will be available as a project coming up into July but for now um, you can see there's orchids on there they are going to feature quite heavily in this particular tutorial um, but I'm now working on other tutorials with other orchids so anyone who enjoys piping cupcake bouquets that will be coming out later on towards wedding season we love wedding season don't we <laughs> it has officially started just to let everybody know I can tell you that because I've been to a wedding this morning so I'm just going to move this out here I'm going to put it up there flat I think because if I try and do anything sort of more complicated than that then I'm going to be in trouble and it's going to end up on the floor so I'll just put it up there cautiously for now and adjust it later on now, next week, Tuesday, I am going to be running How to Price Your Cakes again. So How to Price Your Cakes has been a class that I've done online now for a lot of um, years. And I did it for £10 and I ran it four times. Well, the line has been drawn now um, and I'm now set up a new class. So if you want to join and have that class again, you now need to pay again. I think for £2.50, it was a bit of a bargain in the end. So I've now gone no more and we're going to have a new session of it on Tuesday so if you want to join that class you need to go to the website there tracymancakeschool.co.uk go into the Facebook live classes and if you go in there the very first thing that comes up is how to price your cakes um, and if you go in there and play your, pay your £10 to join the evening session I will put you in a new Facebook group and then on Tuesday evening at seven o'clock, I will be going live and I will be going through how to price cakes. Um, and there will always be some new ideas because you know me, I'm full of ideas, but there will also be some new sheets, some updates on some prices and all these other bits and pieces that I provided in the original class, but more up to date. Now, the original class, I think, has been nearly, a, a, it might be almost a year, if not more, since I last did it. So this is going to be quite a big step forward and, and a lot has changed within that year so I'm hoping that for those of you that did benefit I should say I'd say benefit and enjoy that class 
the new class is going to be coming out on Tuesday. But please don't log in to the old area and expect that class to be alive on there because it won't. It has now got its new group. I keep putting up on the site just to let you know there's going to be a new class, but it won't be in that group. So you have to buy a new ticket, I'm afraid, um, for £10, which is on the website. And the website you need to go to for that is tracymancakeschool.co.uk. And so you then go through to there, buy your ticket we will get notification then we will send you an invite to join the Facebook group um, and then we'll let you in please don't do it on the time the class is due to start because I can't let anybody else in once the live starts so if you are buying a ticket please make sure that once you've got your ticket so you've done it and you signed up that you've had your email to be invited to the group that you click it straight away we have loads of people that just appear as we're about to go live and I can't let you in the group once the live has started because I can't press all these buttons and actually coordinate a live at the same time. And just to make it clear with this group, so you don't have to be a business, you don't have to be um, accounting for it particularly because you, you, know, you need to know every single cost. But what it does do very much so is it opens your eyes and it makes you look at how much things are. It makes you think about your timing. It makes you think about whether you give somebody a gift as a cake and how much you're actually giving them because you now know how much your costs are. Um, it helps you to teach your uh, teach you how to speak to people. So in other words, if someone goes, there's a brilliant um, oh, there's a brilliant thing on TikTok at the moment of this man and he it literally he goes to the door with his phone and he stands there and he goes, how much? And it is somebody going, this is what you get. And it is sometimes people literally go, I want this cake, how much? That's no good, can't do that. We're gonna tell you how to deal with it. So there's that side of it as well. We're not gonna tell you how to price cakes individually. So we're not gonna to say to you, oh yes, you want me to price up that Barbie cake for you. This is how much it's gonna be. We're gonna equip you with all the instructions for how you're going to achieve that yourself. And also, and there are some students amongst my little group at the moment, we're going to teach you that it's OK not to get a cake order because the customer doesn't want to pay. So it's a very informative, quite a clever group that teaches you how to deal with people because everybody's purse is different. And I hope that by giving you a few techniques and making you have thought processes that work with what you're trying to charge, that you will feel more a confident, be reassured that what you're doing is OK. And that's the key to this. So if you are one of these people who sat there plucking figures out of the air, oh, I charge 20 quid for that cake. Let's have a good look at what you're doing. And then I think you might reassess what you're doing. And I think you'll find as well, we can find a better way to explain it to people. And I think that will really help you. So this is a new class coming on Tuesday, seven o'clock, but you need to buy a new ticket. So if you've already been on that group before, there is a new class, new ticket. Um, and it's £10, the same as it was before, but we will be starting again. <laughs> and going through everything but it is such an important thing as well and and um yeah people say to me how much you charge for this what do you charge for that what i charged in january is probably not the same at the moment as what i charged in april because things are changing all the time um there's been so many price changes with just baseline products um our electric costs and my insurance doubled this year just to give you an idea and we are talking seriously doubled uh, my personal business insurance went from 400 to 800 this year. So there are shocking costs around that we need to kind of take into consideration and decide how we're going to sort of deal with these and mitigate some of them. So it's all about that as well. So if you do want to join me, um, I know last time in the group I had about 200 people that came and 200 people learnt a lot of information off me and a lot of people came back to me and said how much it had helped them. So if you are a uh, new to this and you want to have a, a session learning about it or B, you are someone who was in that older group but needs an update, you will need a ticket. So you need to go to the Cake School, go into Facebook Live, find the How to Price Cakes and get your ticket there and we'll send you a link. Um, and I look forward to hopefully seeing lots of you on Tuesday evening um, as we go through this. So it's a closed group, so it's not free. Please make sure that you understand that it won't be in the old group, it will be in a new group. So there we go. So there 
there is a lot going on with the cake school there always is uh it's a new swiss meringue buttercream brand new wisteria cake painting tonight at today uh guinea pig cake coming out on the 11th of may plus how to price your cakes so there is so much coming out all the time we are an extremely busy school we have a lot of new innovative different uh, cake classes um Pinterest is a great place to go and research and do lots of bits and pieces like that. Me, I like to have a look around, see what's going on. And then I like to make something completely different to what I can see. And I think with the new, certainly with the new Bridgerton one, I can't find anyone else who's doing uh, painted guinea pig cake while like I've done. So lots of different things that we can get you involved with in our cake school. So we'd love to have you, even if you buy a class or one class or you come and join as a member, we would love to have you. So do please think about it when you compare the cost of that to going into the shops and buying a couple of Starbucks. I always use that as an excuse, you know, a couple of coffees from a shop. We are going to be, you can get a whole month of me for that. Um, so do think about it. And if you have any questions about it, do please let me know as well. Um, sometimes people sort of hover because they're not sure, but come and give it a try for a month. If you don't like it you can leave if you enjoy it which we have a lot of people that have enjoyed it and stayed then come and stay with us um, a lot of our classes are cake painting but we also have a really good bank of classes like royal icing and sugar paste and beginners classes um, airbrushing even that can get you going go and have a look at the school go into the website and have a look round at what we do because all of that stuff on there is on my cake school and it's all available for you to do it's everything's online and you do it at your own pace and I think that's the other thing as well people think I'm I'm doing all this live and I'm not <laughs> I've recorded it all for you, but it is it is all pre-recorded, which means when you log in um, and then you go back to the school and have another look, it will still be in the same place that you stopped at. So it's your page for you to have a look at. So have a think about it. And if you have any questions, then do please let me know. Right, so we'll move on from the cake school now. We'll go on to Let's Shop Cake Live, which is where we do all our products and bits and pieces. I meant to run around the other side and grab the piping nozzles that I've um, left over there. We have got a selection of vintage collection nozzles, which are made by PME on Let's Shop Cake Live at the moment. If you go on to Let's Shop, you will find those nozzles are there in a box. There are six uh, six in a box and they are used for the cake I just shown you which is the heart shaped cake so I've taken those nozzles and I've applied them to that cake so if you are thinking you are going to have a go at the heart shaped cake when it comes out in June you will need those vintage nozzles so for those of you that are involved in that I'm just letting you know because they are on the website I'm going to get some more in I've got an order in with PME so if they go off sale or they say they're out of stock they won't be out of stock for very long so uh, we will get that all organized for you so let me turn around i've got some new things for you of course i have <laughs> oh you know me i like, don't like to let uh, rest on my laurels for too long so we are now moving on to some new uh cake toppers i'm going to do today so cookie cutters cake toppers whatever it is that you want to do with them i was greatly inspired by the little rabbit that we did on top of the cupcakes um at easter so i've expanded that idea and today we're going to do 3d cats and dogs so that's fun isn't it so we're going to have a look at those as well we've done those already and we're going to have a look at some other um cookie cutters that you will be familiar with that we've shrunk down ready for cupcakes so you'll see these and go i've got that one well we've now got a mini version of it so there are lots that you will be familiar with today and i'm going to put some of them together so you can have a look at them and how they are so the cats and dogs is new so we're going to start with that one straight away so i'm going to bring in the cookie cutter and i'm going to explain how you're going to get these because lots of you will be going well i've already got the head and i've already got this that and the other so i'm going to tell you how it works and what it works with because it's quite important you understand it so here we go right so some of you will be familiar let's bring him in because you'll remember him with this cookie cutter here now this one we had in two places you could buy it with the large version so there was it's called puppy and there was a large one and a mini one so this mini one works with this new cutter here so this is the dog's behind <laughs> dog's bottom um this one works with this one here now 
We do have other dogs. The problem with the other dogs, well, some of them are okay and some of them are a little bit too big for this particular one. This has solely been built for this one here. It will make a bit more sense when I put it together on the cupcake in a minute because you're probably looking at this going, I've no idea how this is going to work, but I'm going to show you in a second anyway. So we've also got, let me move the dogs out of the way because they're the more complicated thing. And we've got the cat. Now the cat... We had the cat with a large cat and we had him out this time last year. Um, but I've now made the cat's tail or the cat's bottom um, and that's going to be going together with that. So that has been sized up for that. Very straightforward. Cats are cats, aren't they, at the end of the day? So the piece that you'll be seeing on the website will be this piece here on its own, not including this piece here. So if you want this piece, that belongs to another set, which is that one and the large one. So I just want to be really super clear that if you're expecting these two to turn up together, they won't. It will be that one or that one and the large one together, all right? Just in case anybody's getting confused about what I'm talking about here. Um, and these are going to be made on cupcakes. So I'm gonna demonstrate the cat because I've already set the cat up ready to go and I'm gonna to explain to you why we've had to pre-do these in advance as well. So it will make a little bit more sense then. So I'm just gonna bring in my cocoa butter. You can see I've been doing lots of painting, obviously, and we'll get this lit. She says, hopefully there's some gas in here. Yes, there is. I need to get a new one. I say that every time I'm going to go live. I'm going to pop that on there. We'll just let that heat up. So we'll move that out of the way for the moment. You will be needing Saraceno paste or some form of modelling paste um, or even a flower paste to make this work like this because it is a lovely 3D structure, but you will need that for this part here, particularly because obviously we want this to be um, straight and we don't want it to be attaching it to your model and then it all falling apart all over the place so it is quite important that you have saraceno we have got that on the website so if you're looking for a modeling paste saraceno is very good so you will be able to have a go at that and i'm going to bring in two that i cut out yesterday and you're going to be going oh well you've cut them out already well i have cut them out already because i need them to be set so you can see the cat's tail is standing up if i cut this out live now obviously the cat's tail is going to collapse. So it's something that you have to do a little bit in advance. Um, and that's why I've done it now. Like so, I'm just taking that little bit of icing sugar out of the cat's eye. So I'm going to do a black cat, but I've actually already done a grey stripey one. So you'll be able to see both because I thought it might be quite nice to see two different cat options. Um, what we'll do in a minute is we'll just paint the cat's eyes and then I'm going to show you how to assemble the whole thing and we'll pop it onto... Um, something like, let's we'll find a nice cupcake with maybe, she says maybe, because I forgot to bring the grass nozzle from home, but I might have one in here, you never know. I seem to be rather good at gathering nozzles at the moment down here, so I will try and find a grass nozzle. Is that one? No, I thought I'd done one then. I think it's part of the sugar craft gun. <laughs> or I'll put it on the other one. Anyway, oh, we'll pipe it, even better. You know me. Oh, actually, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll use that nozzle there. So we'll use our good old classic Wilton 18. We love a good Wilton 18. And we'll mix up some nice green grass and we'll put the cat on some green grass. How about that? And I'll show you a couple of options, some with the Gem 233 nozzle and some with the Wilton 18. And then you can decide which one you think is the one that you prefer because it's personal taste isn't it so um, we'll have both options and then you can kind of work it out from there really so i am thrilled that i'm now doing a live and i have found my icing sugar and my scissors <laughs> sometimes when you go live and you think oh, where are they and i can see them so that's all good so i'll cut that off there pop our adapter in here like so we'll take that nozzle pop it on squeeze that down like so so attach it on there we go done so that's ready to roll I'm going to put those up there in a minute that will all become apparent when I put it all together so we'll just get that there for a second now I'm going to make up a little bit of green buttercream so I've got some filling cream which is actually a sweet success product it's a very white buttercream 
um, and I just have that available really this morning for nothing else other than that's what I've got so that's what we're going to use and I'm just going to so you can hear me chucking things about in the background here we're just going to there it is dye this green my favorite green color ever that I use on absolutely everything is this one this is color splash leaf it is the nicest and most realistic of all greens, I think, in my world anyway. And we do have this again on the website, Colour Splash Leaf. And then we'll give this a bit of a mix. I would have done this beforehand, but I was very busy with these weddings this morning. So I've got a bit behind, but we'll mix it anyway while we're here. And then you can have a look at the lovely colour before we put the cat on it. Might as well have everything ready because these are very quick to assemble once you've... Um, done them basically you're just going to cut them out leave them to dry and then put it together it can be easier really so there we go so that's our green color there it's a nice green okay right, i'm just going to leave it like that for the moment i'll pop that over there out of the way i could leave it there so you could see it a little bit there we go lovely green nice black cat halloween don't forget we're nowhere near halloween but i'm just sowing you a seed in your mind so you can also think why you would do a black cat I have to say I went out last night somebody's house and they had a black cat and it took a bit of a shine to me so I spent most of the evening with the black cat um, and it was great <laughs> I love a good black cat um, so I'm just going to clean my brush up so this is paintbrush number one so this is from my collection of paintbrushes we have sets of five or you can buy them individually and these are what I use to teach people so I can tell you what brush to use. So I'm just going to get a little bit of green. And all I was going to do was just paint the eyes a bit green. I'm not sure if this cat had green eyes last night, to be honest, I didn't really look. Um, but we'll assume that it has got green eyes, maybe. I'll go across that way. I should have left that gap, actually, but I didn't. Oops, you just paint across it and it's done. Save me having to put the black in. I'll do that one in a second. There we go. Um, they don't have any other like pink noses or anything else. They're very much like that and that's it. So there's nothing too complicated to paint with a cat. I'm going to show, I'll show you the tabby one I did. I've done two examples of this one for you to have a look at. I should have done a ginger one actually because then, there we go, that's better got our cat nice and easy there we go right so what do we do next that's the question let us grab some now you can use at this point some black sugar paste you don't have to use modeling paste at this point because you can keep this flat so I'm going to turn that over I'm going to take hold of some black sugar paste I'm going to give it a bit of a need I did try and put this together just before I went live and I was covered in it literally um, but I've managed to sort of semi recover it now for myself I'm going to roll that into a ball into a cone I'm going to have a look at that so I'm going to need a bit more because I've tried to do this to make it very simple for you to put together a cat without having to be the world's best modeler because sometimes modeling can be tricky for people and I think this is a nice easy peasy way of doing a cat so I've got this cone here and I'm just going to press it down so it's almost the size of this bit here. So the back part of that. So I'm going to just take it, just move you out of the way a minute and just run it round like so. So you're just going to make a cone that fits that, that area there. OK. So press it down. I always find it easier just to do it on the board. It soon sorts itself out. Um, right. A little bit of oil icing. If you've got the chance and the opportunity to make it in black it's probably a better idea than trying to do it in white but white is what I've got so that's what we're going to be using so I'll put a little bit of white on there but if you do have black it's probably better than if you go wrong it doesn't matter like I just dropped it <laughs> Tracy stop cursing yourself right okay there we go so we're going to pop that piece on like so just get that bit of icing out the bottom there there we go 
So I filled up that entire surface area there. That's what I'm trying to sort of tell you that I've done. And I'm going to turn that like so. And you can see my lovely cat's tail there is appearing. I'm going to just cut the end off this because it's just a little bit too big. So I'm going to take my scissors and just chop that back a little bit, pinch it in and leave it like so. There we go. So you can see what you've got at the moment. I'm going to take this other piece of black and I'm going to make some paws or some legs, I guess. And I'm just going to make those for the front. So I'm going to just take hold of this piece here. I'm going to roll it like so. And then what we'll do is we will cut it in half. Let's take my cutting wheel. I must find my plastic side scrapers because they're my right hand, really. I love them. Let's cut that. I'm going to have two cat's paws that are going to be roughly this sort of size. We'll make them a little bit shorter, a little bit more stumpier. There we go, like so. And we got actually, we won't mark them until we put them on the cake because then we won't damage them. That's probably the easiest thing to do. And we're going to take some of the green. There we go. Take a little bit of green. We'll pop that in there. Like so. Managed to do that without getting it all over myself, which is pretty unbelievable. Push that down to the end. Don't overfill your piping bags. It's an absolute pain if you do. There it is. It's coming through. Um, we're going to grab a cupcake and we're going to pipe some different grass to what I piped on the other one. So all we're going to do is squeeze and pull up like so. Am I under camera? Yes, just about. So squeeze and pull up. So if you don't have a grass nozzle, this is a different way of doing it. If you do have a grass nozzle, then it is nozzle number 233, Gem, which is what I've got on my site, or Wilton 18, which is what I'm using here at the moment. So you can see it's going to take, I don't think it takes you any longer actually, once you get going. So you just Go round like so. See, I don't mind doing stuff like this. I know some people be going, oh, it takes forever. No, it doesn't take forever because I wouldn't do it on a live if it did. Um, but you just go round and squeeze and you'll get two different sort of grass effects here. I'm just going to put that down for a second while I just wind the bag down a bit further. So I've got a bit more buttercream coming out. I've got a couple of gaps. I'm just going to go back and infill those. Don't really want to see my cake. I could have put some green buttercream down first, which I should have done, but I didn't. So I'll just go back and infill any little gaps that we've got as we go. So today's focus is very much about cupcakes. We are looking at cupcake toppers today. That's what I'm focusing on. So I've got a few different ideas for you. Wedding season's coming, so we've got a wedding option. Um, and then we're looking at cakes as well which is really nice so I will bring all of those out as we go all of the stuff is already loaded onto the website so if you are thinking what you got what you got go and have a look at let's shop cake live and you'll see everything there already um, all the bits and pieces I just wanted to clearly and try and explain which bits you were buying to do the cat and which bits you're buying to do the dog if you want to make them 3D because some of you would have had these last year um, so it's quite tricky for me to package them up together because you've already got them so I thought I'm gonna have to do them all separate so um, hopefully it's making sense to you there we go all right so that's our base and then all I'm going to do is take my back end of my cat and I'm going to pop that on there like so there we go and then we're going to pop Gonna lift that up one leg in there one leg in there I've got some green buttercream on there of course I did one leg in there there we go like so hopefully you can see that clearly enough I'll tip that that way and then I'm just going to take my um really tall and just put in three little lines to make the paws at the front. Oops. One, two, three, there we go, like so, you can see that hopefully, yep. And then we're going to take our cat's head, now remember it's all set, so this isn't something that I've just done here and now, I had to pre-do this, I'm just going to put a little bit of icing there, I'm trying to put too much because I'm still using white, and I'm going to take my cat's head, I'm going to tip it slightly to one side, and that is going to give me a 3D cat on top of a cupcake, which I think is super cool. And I love it. And it's easy. I've tried to do it so it's really super easy. I'm just going to take the 
icing sugar off the back of the tail. There we go. You could put pumpkin vine then, couldn't you, if it's Halloween? So there we go. So that is the 3D cat. I'm going to get the other option of the cat I did later. But isn't that easy to do? You're literally just going to cut the back out, cut the front out, make a cone, two little um, sausages there, make some marks on them and stick it all together and you get an instant cat. And I've done that with the dog as well because I want you just to be able to make these really quickly and they are just super fun to do. It's meant to be very, very easy and very straightforward. So I'm going to pop him there for a second and I'm going to get the other one and the dog so you can see the options with the grass as well. So we'll have a look at the other cat. Here's the other, so the other cat's very smiley. So this is the other cat that I've done. So this cat here I did with, um, the nozzle that I used on here is 233, which is a gem nozzle. Um, it's the same cat head. It's the same cat tail. So it's the same new cookie cutter there, the one that we've got there. And we have got, um, he is grey. And what I've done is I made him in grey and then I just painted a few stripes on him to turn him into a tabby cat. So that's all I did. It's very, very easy to do. And the, the idea behind it is to help you make something that's nice, quick and easy um, as a nice little cake topper that's not too complicated. Sometimes people get a bit overwhelmed with when you're trying to do um, cake toppers like this. And I think this is nice and straightforward. You cut out two pieces, make a cone, make some sausages and then stick them on. As long as it's all dry, then it will work for you. OK, so it's really important that you do actually let the tail and the head dry. Um, and you must use Saraceno paste or a modelling paste in order to make that work because they've got to obviously be able to have the ability to stand up. So um, there you go. So if you are thinking, well, I could make multiple cat cakes with this. That's what the cat one looks like. So that's the cat's. It's called the cat's tail, I think. I don't think I called it cat's behind, but that's the cat's tail. Remembering, of course, for those of you that had already bought the head, it will be with the large head. So there was a large head and a small head cookie cutter for the cat. This is not with this. I've kept it separate because of the um, people already buying them. So this is to make the back end of the cat. All right. So if you want to make the front end and you don't have this piece, you're going to need to get that piece as well. All right. So I'm going to put you there, my lovely cats. I'm going to tip them forward so you can have a look at them because they are so cute. My cat's got a um, walks around with a curl in his tail. <laughs> And I saw it and I thought, Do you know what, that's so lovely. And anyone who's got a cat who's got a curl in his tail, you appreciate it immediately because you go, yeah, that's so cute. So that's why we're focusing on these. And I thought, let's do something different. We did the rabbits, if you remember, at Easter and we made those 3D coming from the cookie cutter. And I thought this is exactly the same, but it's going to be for cats. So I think this is something that we can definitely um, do. I think it's a really cute idea. So that's them. And then I've done the little dog. So we've done the dog remembering, of course, that we've used a different setup. So we've used the dog tail, which is considerably shorter. There we go. There's the dog's tail. Um, and then we've used this cookie cutter from the front here. So I've done him in the same way. I've cut the back out and the front out. And then I just actually added a little bit of extra sort of fluff on the back of his tail, which I just attached to this little bit here. And I did that while it was drying. So it wasn't something that I did while it was standing. I cut it out and then I fluffed up the tail and left it to dry. And then I attached it and I put a bit at the back and a bit at the front just because I thought with a dog, well, actually, it could do with a bit more of a fluffier tail. So that's how I dealt with that. So that's the dog one. So this is the dog's behind. Um, it's a different cutter to this one. Now, if you've already got some of the other dog cookie cutters, some of them are too big. Some of them are OK. Um, some work, some don't. I think I only picked up the large spaniel. That is the small spaniel. Um, the mini ones should be OK. The Westie might be a tiny bit too big, but as a general rule, they should be OK, I think the Westie might be a little bit too big. The puppy works really well. And obviously the cat is standard. So the cat is very straightforward. 
there we go so there we go so if you want to have a go at making 3d dogs and cats these two cookie cutters are available i've put them separately because i know not everybody loves cats and not everyone loves dogs so you have the option to buy the dog or the option to buy the cat um, and i've left it like that for you to make your own decisions um, and obviously if you need the faces then you will need to get the sets that are involved with the faces which are of course listed on there as well so if you're getting confused um then just let me know and we'll try and help you through that bit but um i just thought it was quite nice to have a nice little set of pets and i thought they were really good fun to make really straightforward and anyone could do them that's what i've tried to do is make it really easy for anyone to make a lovely 3d pet on top of a cupcake so i will definitely take some pictures of these at the end so everybody can have a nice look at them and see how we're going with that so if you remember in terms of the pets last year, so we had the Spaniels and we had the German Shepherds and all the other dogs as well. We also had a pet feeding bowl. And I'm going to just move those back there for a minute, put the cats and the dogs out of the way, put those across there. So we had, I'm getting in the muddle now, Let me just have a little mini clean. Only because once it starts to go downhill it's all downhill from here <laughs> so last year we had this one which was the pet feeding bowl so I want to point out to you now we have a new one we have a mini one this is the mini pet feeding bowl and again you can do this for a cat or a dog and it fits comfortably onto a cupcake so I'm going to run through this now and show you how to make this so you can do this in any colour so if you particularly have, I don't know, a blue one or a pink one or a, perhaps a silvery coloured one, you know, like a grey one. I'm just trying to find a colour. Let's do one to go with the, we'll do one that's in grey to go with the cat, shall we? Um, so we'll do a nice grey. I've done a pink one already, so I'll show you the pink one later. So we'll do this now. So again, this was done as a cookie. If you remember last year, we were doing lots of cookies and we still are and you still can with this. It's still the same principle, but I'm going to put this on top of a cupcake and then we'll have a full collection of animals then won't we we'll have cats dogs and feeding bowls so this one comes on its own this was available in a set of two with a heart shaped one with paw prints on the heart this one is just on its own and it is listed as pet bowl cupcake cookie cutter i think something like that anyway so let's roll this out so depending on whether you you can customize this which is quite nice as well i love anything you can do that's customized me anything a bit different so because this is a topper we'll leave it about there take hold of this pop that down press down give it a wiggle might be able to pick it up without my plastic scraper yeah good press that down so you get the paw print in the middle and the edge of the bowl that's quite important part of this so make sure you get all the markings turn it back again i've got it all oh, yeah there we go and that's my little bowl there now depending on how inventive you feel like you want to be you could also cut up some cat or dog food <laughs> in your bowl if you want to. I'll we'll show you how to do that. So if you get hold of a piece of, I don't know, whatever colour it is, my cats eat that Sheba stuff, which is gross. It's all on the bowl anyway. But um, I'm going to just do what looks like, I guess, sort of biscuits, really. Um, I could make it a little bit darker, but I won't. I'll keep it this um pale brown color and then all you do is literally just roll out a sausage like so don't want them to be too big because otherwise what happens is it sort of dominates the bowl a bit and looks a bit weird so you want to have it so it's not too um not too thick i'm going to just take a little bit of water I just put that on there just so it's got something to stick to and then all I did was I'll just chop the end off is I literally just cut some little tiny pieces of sugar paste like so and then pick them up and just attach them onto where the bowl should be you know the inside of the bowl 
put some little bits of food in there. So you could do the same with this one if you wanted to fill up the, the bowl, you can do that. You could even fill it up with little fudge pieces. So if you've got like, you know, those fudge sweets, you could go and buy those and fill, fill up the bowl with those. Or just use a little bit of brown sugar paste, whichever you've got really. So we'll cut a few more up, we're nearly that. There we go. And we'll pop those on. Do you want to put too many actually because in otherwise it looks like it's kind of piled up to the ceiling it looks awful so just a few there we go lovely if you love cat food <laughs> or dog food depending what it is that you like okay and then you can take your paint brushes for those of you that do cake painting with me you can use a brush or you can use something like an edible pen if you use an edible pen then you can literally sit there and just color in the little markings that are on here so if you are someone who doesn't like doing painting or doesn't want to get involved in painting then the edible pens are quite good you just need to be careful um, because the sugar paste will be quite soft and if you press too hard it'll dig in so you want to just kind of almost sort of brush it over the top of what you're doing you don't want to go too hard on it just take it lightly as you go and just go round like that you see for me i'd be getting the paint brushes out by now rather than color it in but some people don't mind coloring it in so i'll show you coloring in as a difference so that if you have got a pen you can use it obviously this isn't a sharpie it is actually an edible pen and they are on the website so please don't just pick up a felt tip pen and do this because otherwise we're gonna have somebody's not going to be very well so this is an edible black pen yeah. You can also, if you want to, like if you've got your the name of your pet, you could also write on it the name if you want to, if you want to personalise the bowl. There's no reason why you can't do that as well. So you could write that on there, couldn't you? So these are quite good fun to make if you've got, you know, kids you want to sit around making a few animals and bits and pieces or you just want to make a few animals and bits and pieces then an edible pen a little bit of a cookie cutter and you're up and running so there you go so that's what you can do if you want to do it with a pen um i'm gonna just grab my paintbrush and just finish it off because i prefer it that way and it's going to look strange against what i've done earlier if i don't so i'm just going to very quickly go over that but you can see the difference not a lot only a lot to somebody who's being fussy like me <laughs> there we go just get it slightly darker i guess with um the paint maybe let's turn that around like so there we go done right and then of course we can then get ourselves another cupcake how many cupcakes I brought down with me today? I'm probably going to run out at some point, so we'll see how we go. See how we go, and then you can again just go round where are we? We're on the screen, like so, with your icing. And also, when you do this, you will get quicker because the icing will get hotter when you're gripping an icing bag. You'll tend to find you'll start to break the buttercream down as you're going round with it anyway, so that's quite normal. bit of grass it's hypnotic isn't it <laughs> done there you go all right and then you can take hold of your pet bowl now i made two and i'll show you the other one i made in a minute and you can pop that on top there so this is i'm trying to give you some perspective here because sometimes when you see things on camera you don't realize how small they are so why i do this is so that you can see exactly what sort of size it is so this is the large one which is clearly much much bigger than the little new cupcake one which is the small one i've just done here i also did a pink one yesterday so if you've got a cat and you prefer to have a pink bowl then you can always swap it over and do a pink one on 
on there but I think yeah you know with this cat here do you want the same colour as yourself maybe um, but if you were doing a set of cupcakes together it's quite nice to have the cat with the matching bowl maybe or would you prefer that one which one would you prefer madam um, but anyway there you go so you can use that or that but it just adds another element and as I say you can then take your pen and you can write the cat's name on there if you particularly want to or you can make cookies and then you'll have another little cookie selection there which is what we did with this one here so you can see that there all right so this is the new pet bowl and it's a small cupcake cookie cutter so just keep an eye out for it um, because it is um, not the large one here it is a cupcake size one for uh, cupcakes okay right so let's move that back I'm going to move you out of the way again I'm getting a nice little collection in front of me now let's move that out of the way and I'm going to bring in another easier one we're going to be done with the pets for the moment yeah we've got a bear but we'll wait until we get to the bear I will just go for the wedding cake so there we go pop that over there I'll get rid of that and move that over there so it's going up to wedding season now we have this tall cookie cutter it is the only one um, that I've ever made and it is certainly uh, rep uh, you know representative of the fact that these wedding cakes now are taller if you go and google for a wedding cake cookie cutter they all tend to be short I don't think anyone's quite cottoned on they are meant to be large but I've now bought out the mini version so the mini wedding cake cookie cutter is the one I'm going to show you next and this one is for cupcakes again so I'm going to show you how to do that so we again you can make wedding cookies for this or wedding cupcakes with this one you could still make wedding cookies with this but I have made this specifically for that job right I'm just going to give my hands a wash because they're still black from the cat so let me just get rid of that otherwise everything I touch for the next 10 minutes is going to be grey in colour I don't want that so this is listed these are both listed on their own wedding cake cookie cutter small wedding cake cookie cutter or mini Anything that's listed as a mini is um, for cupcakes. That's what I tried to do anyway. I tried to be as clear as I could. You don't have to necessarily use modelling paste for this. You can just use sugar paste if you're going to put them straight on top of your cupcakes. So you don't have to do anything else particularly with that. And I'm just going to show you um, how to do these. Very simple. And I love this because it's got lots of, um, you've got lots of flexibility with this to kind of customise it. So if you're doing a cake for somebody, a wedding cake for somebody, and then you fancy putting on some different decorations or trying to match it, then you've got the option to do that here because it's a standard wedding cake. Nice and easy. Okay. So let's roll this out. It's a little bit sticky. I don't know why. But it is, so let's get rid of that, make that less sticky. There we go, that's a bit better. I think my rolling pin's a bit sticky. Right, there we go. So we're going to take hold of the cookie cutter and press down, give it a wiggle. Like that. There we go, and that's the size of it. So it's tiny, teeny tiny. I'm going to bring my camera down a little bit lower so you can see what's going on there. There we go. I'm trying to show you all my mess. And then I'm going to take hold of a cutting wheel and I'm just going to cut across there and across there. I'm not going to cut, I'm going to mark across there. So I've turned it now into my three tier cake. So um, one of the things that you can decorate these with are the tiny decoration moulds. This is going to come into its own. So if you have one of these, this is what I'm going to be using to decorate it with. If you don't have one, we've got some on the website, a limited number, and I mean a limited number of them on the site. Um, let me find the piping bag. What do I do with that? There, my hand. there it is. So in order to make it look a bit more like a wedding cake, you can take hold of your piping bag with a number two nozzle and just go across and pipe a bit of a shell line across there and there like so and you could even do it across the bottom if you want to like that basically just replicate what you've made and then you've got on this mold so many different decorations that you can literally pick and choose 
what you do, whether you want to put bows on it, whether you want to put flowers on it, all sorts of different things. And then you can go from there. So this wedding cake one, someone's just asked me, is it new? This one is not a new one. This is one we've had for quite a long period of time. And the new one is the little one. So we have had this one a while. So if you are thinking, I wonder if I've got that one, go and have a check to see if you've got it. Um, don't order it by accident, but they are available separate. So the wedding cake cookie cutter, I think it only came out last year. So when I say it's new, it was only new last year. So it's not been around that long. I'm just making this a little bit paler because otherwise it's going to be too bright and then if you're making these for say somebody who is getting married these are very very quick to make if you wanted to make some cupcakes for somebody you know have a nice day and all that um, you can just take hold of something like this bow mold um, at the moment everything seems to be covered in bows so bows are a big thing at the minute so that's what we will do we will put bows on things so we've got this cookie little bow here and we'll pop that in the middle of our little topper and then we can use something like one of the dotting tools so remember we've talked about these before these are little tools with tiny little balls on the ends that we can use to make patterns so we can whoops just put my finger in the icing there that's not helpful I'll go back and do that in a second so we can just take our white icing and just add a few little spots or you could pipe them on if you particularly want to, onto the bow, make it look a little bit more um, vintagey, I guess. There we go, like so. There we go. And then that is our little topper. So I've made, now you could make these in advance and you could then leave them to dry and then you could put them onto the cakes now if you're going to do that i think it's probably best you do do them in modeling paste because with the modeling paste it gives it the opportunity to dry and then you can pick them up a little bit easier so i've got some that i made earlier and you'll be able to see that i can pick them up and move them around so literally i can put them in my hand and do whatever i want with them so i've did the big bow on this one and two little bows or sorry three little bows on this one but also on this mold you've got little tiny roses little mini flowers but if you don't have the mold but you have something like this plunger cutters these work very well on here as well because you can see obviously it's not very big so if you've got mini plunger cutters even if they are this sort of size you can add those to these tiny little cutters and that will make um, a really nice wedding cake as well so the wedding cake cookie cutter the small one is the new one today okay so don't get too confused there that is the new one that you're looking at at. um and it is again cupcake size if i bring a cupcake in you'll see what sort of size it is let's find one i haven't just done if i pop it on there like that you'll see roughly what sort of size it is so let's bring that down a bit so you can see okay so if you are making wedding cakes for a party um as you know even as a thank you or you're the supplier or whatever it is that is the new one you could if you wanted to put a um I was going to say cocktail stick in there, but you have to be a bit careful with cocktail sticks, maybe a piece of dried spaghetti and you could have them standing as well. So if you wanted to have the wedding cake standing on a cupcake, you could do that as well. Or you could let it dry and perhaps prop it up with a little bit of royal icing and then leave it to dry then. But there's lots of different ideas that you can do with that or make lots and lots of mini biscuits, mini wedding cake biscuits. So um, with this particular cutter, there's lots of things that you can do with that. OK, so that's the new wedding cookie cake cutter. Now, while we're still in the flower mode, I will show you. We've got white out. I'm trying to reduce the amount of <laughs> colour that I end up with. I always end up with too much. I'm going to show you the new flower cookie cutter now as well. There's loads of new little bits and pieces today. They are all cupcake orientated. So this one is the new um, mini petal. I'm going to show you how big it is when I've done it. And then you'll be able to see what you can do with it. So I'm going to just take some icing sugar. And again, you can make cookies or you can make toppers. I'm going to move that cupcake out of the way because I'm not going to use that one because I've already done one, but you'll get to see it in just a second. Take your cookie cutter, press down, give it a wiggle. Make sure it's cut right through, turn it up the other way and press down. 
So there's lots of options here. You could do these in loads of colours. You could stick them onto the cake. There's all sorts of things that you can do here. So they're not just for um, daisies or whatever it is that you choose. You're going to get a flower, a basic flower that you can then customise whichever it is that you want to do. So I'll put that down there. And I'm going to take hold of a little bit of yellow. I'll just find my yellow in my bag. I've got a bag of colours next to me, which is, is great sometimes. <laughs> sometimes not, but saves me having to mix up lots of colours continuously. But I've got a little bit of yellow here. So we'll take hold of a bit of yellow and we'll just roll ourselves a ball like so. Take hold of a little bit of water. Let's find the water. There we go. Pop that in the middle. Like so. And then I'm going to just, so I'm wearing a bit of green on my hand there, squash it down a bit and pop that into the centre. Just press it down like so. And then if you take hold of one of your Dresden tools, you can just press down like so. Now, you can either mark the um, flower at this point or you might prefer to leave it like that. I think it's entirely up to you, whatever your opinion is, but you could do these in pink and white, hot pink and pale pink, blue and dark blue. You can do them in black and white. So it's a very versatile little cookie cutter here and I'm just trying to show you what sort of options that you can do. And I'm going to show you on a cupcake now the sizing of it so that you understand the difference between the two. So this one here, um, I haven't marked like I have on this one. So if I pick them up, they're the same thing, but I've just done some slightly different decoration on there. So all I've done with this is taken the back of a knife and I've just marked individual sections. And then I've painted a little bit of green around the inside edge there and I've popped them onto a cupcake with the gem 233 nozzle to make a kind of like grass effect. So a bit of a daisy chain type thing. But if you wanted to stick these onto the side of a cake, they would make a really nice kind of bright spring type cake. So if you wanted to stick them onto the side of a cake, loads and loads and loads of different colours. I think that would look absolutely amazing. So if you are thinking you would quite like to have a go at doing something like that, those are the two options. This on These can go on cakes, but they can also go on cupcakes as well. And we have different sizes in this one. This is the mini version. Um, we do have larger ones in the same cookie cutter as well. So if you want to vary the size of these, then you can find it. I think it's called the eight petal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, it's the eight petal cookie cutter. So if you want to get the larger one as well as the smaller one, they are all sold individually. So you do have the option there to be able to pick up the larger one as well if you particularly want to. But you can see again just how quick it is to do something like this and put it on to a cupcake you could put it with my cat couldn't you would like a nice big flower um you could again just add it you can also pinch it up a little bit as well so if you prefer to have it a little bit more kind of tighter so if you want to make it a little bit more 3d rather than flat you can pinch the edges up there like so tuck it in tuck it in behind and make a little flower that's a little bit more kind of 3D as well. So you don't have to have everything flat um, if you want to, because obviously, because you've got the markings on here as well, you've got the option to kind of bend it and get them into position, which I think is really nice as well. Um, you can always bend it and then add the centre. You could use sprinkles. So if you want to have a different centre, you could put sprinkles in there. You don't have to have it um, completely flat like this one but those are the options for having this particular cookie cutter so this is the eight petal mini eight petal mini okay which that's one of the new ones today as well so we've got loads of new cookie cutters today I know it's a little bit complicated and I'm rushing through them a little bit because we've got some more to show you before we disappear what time is it at the moment let's have a look quarter to two um so i'm going to show you the two other cake ones that we've got and then if i don't get time to do the bear today i will come back and do the bear another day or i will do a lovely tiktok on it we do like tiktok so we'll do a nice tutorial on it as well so we'll get that done let's pop that over there and we just move the wedding cakes up a little bit so i've got a tiny bit more space there we go 
mini weddings, mini daisies. There we go. So, last year we produced these. I'm sure some of you will remember these. We did, um, let me find, that's the size of the cookie cutter. So this last year we made these, which are the large drip and the candle cake, the small ca uh, cake slice. Now we've got mini versions of them. So we are now going to show you how to do the mini versions of these. Uh, and again, these are for cupcakes. So these are going to be um, little versions. So here they are. So this is the mini. That's the mini. And then this is the mini version of this one, but it doesn't have a candle on it. Um, the candle's been left off deliberately because you can add one if you want to, um, or you can leave it off. And the reason I left that off is because it was making this so small that trying to cut anything out, it was just becoming impossibly difficult. And I thought this is just going to be a nightmare. So we've left that out um, and we've got the cake slice now without it having the candle on it. So I'm going to run through these now and show you how to make these. So we'll move those out of the way. They're lovely and simple to make. Nice and straightforward. Nothing to fret over particularly. So I've got a nice pale sort of brownie colour. So I guess this represents a cake of some description. Maybe a Victoria sponge. I don't know. Do you think that's maybe a Victoria sponge colour? What have I done before? Yeah, something along those lines anyway. <laughs> so we'll grab hold of this and give it a bit of a wiggle. And again, we'll just roll it out. So the large and the small version of this cookie cutter are available separately. So because we've already had the large ones and now we have the minis. So if you've already got this one, it will have been separate from this one. Sometimes we bring cookies um, out as pairs, but sometimes if we're making a new range and it's a shrunk version of an old range, they will be separated. So we'll press that down, give it a wiggle it up, press down, like so, make sure we've got all the markings, and then press it out. So there's one, like so. Uh, the other one we'll do, uh, let's do a more pink colour, shall we? I had pink in my hand a minute ago, there we go. Let's do a pink one. So we'll give that a Quick. We'll do them at the same time and then you can see them come together. So we'll roll this out. If I can get it out of this little piece. No, I'm going to need to mix a bit more up. Let's mix a little bit more up. I was trying to be clever then, but I don't think I was going to make it. So we'll add a bit more white into here to get pink. So all these cookie cutters are available on letshopcakelive.co.uk. You'll see them on there. We do have them already. They are here. So we will be dispatching ASAP. So if you want to get them, then let us know because we will be able to send them out straight away next week, which is nice. Um, I've been super organised and got them in early. So that's good. Right, let me just find... Um, ooh, have we run out of pink? Oh, I moved it. I probably moved it. I think we've run out of pink. Right, let me run around the other side and grab some pink. Need some pink gel. So we use colour splash mainly because it's such a nice colour. Oh, there we go. Right. It's one of the cheaper one of the cheaper ones to buy gel but it is a good one so we'll go for that right there it is colour splash pink and then we'll just need when you buy it you just need to cut the end off it like so just so you can let the gel out so I'm going to do that away from the cupcakes I didn't particularly want to end up with a piece of plastic falling into those so I put a little blob in there. You'll see just how strong it is. You have to be super careful with this because it can be very, very strong very quickly. I don't particularly want it to be that strong. Put down a little bit of icing sugar. Okay. Give that a bit of a knead. Like so. Like so. 
so you can make loads of these minis really quickly I know it looks like I'm faffing a little bit but actually you can do them really quickly because you've just cut out a whole load of them at the same time so you'll do all the bases together and then you'll do all the next bit together um, so a box of a box of these can be done very quickly my arm in the green then that green is haunting me today right let's pop that on there like so press down give it a wiggle peel off the icing turn it over whoop leapt out at me press down put my fingers in the icing sugar to stop it lifting press down get all the marks turn it back there you go so you've got the base two bases of our cakes there now lovely let's take the pink icing and we'll we'll give the drip cake a little bit of um, pink icing so we'll just take a bit of water just run that along there we'll just take our our icing and just roll it so that it doesn't have to be um, even because obviously it's filling so that's quite handy isn't it so it can be a little bit sort of uneven in fact we'd like it to be a little bit uneven and we don't normally say things like that so it's good good news for everybody i'll just cut the end off there and just sharpen that up a little bit and then again we'll do the same on the other side so we'll just take a little bit more of the icing and we'll roll it don't want it to be too thick because don't forget it is filling so we don't want it massively thick again we'll oh no it's too thick and also too even there we go that's better pop that in there like that and we'll just take that out Oop. like so okay oops that's that bit there isn't it I don't want to muddle that up right let's keep my bit of pink now what I really want is a piece of red which luckily I have Bingo, that's what I want. I've got a nice bit of red. Red and pink, very nice colour combination, I think. So we're going to go red and pink. I'm just going to give it a bit of a need, though, because it's when things have been in a, um, a bag for a while, they need a little bit of kneading to get them going. And if they start sticking to your fingers or doing anything like that, a little bit of icing sugar, and that will soon stop it. that goes in there so you can see what we're doing right tiny decorations here we go so you can decorate your cake however you like that's entirely up to you now I've, I've based these around doing a drip but I'm going to make the decorations first and then I'll put the drip on so that we don't end up with um, the drip drying out before we've put the decorations on so I'm just going to put my icing into these little tiny red hearts that again are on this tiny decoration mold and I'm going to bend it back I've got a little heart there so again they're just a tiny little ball press it in like so bend it back out so you can start to do these very very quickly and if you can do them in advance even better then you won't have to take too long doing them I don't think I need very many four I think for this particular one in fact I'll do a fifth one because I want to do one on a that cake but I'm going to do that one with the slightly bigger heart which is this one here sorry I'm slightly off screen there there we go you can see a bit more what I'm doing now okay so that's a slightly bigger heart there so we'll have that one for that cake there put that one there um now let's do some pink um, we'll do some there's a little tiny flower here so if I just take some pink and press it down put my fingers in there so I don't get it stuck so again let's do that again press down and then bend it back little flower they're so sweet I love things like that you know this reminds me a little bit like I don't know doll's house type stuff you know very small but also not unachievable. I hate things that are fiddly and unachievable. This is so achievable. And there's also some really cute little cherries in there as well. So if you fancy doing some cherries, you could. 
and you could paint those if you want to. Right, we'll do one more little flower and then I'll show you when I've done this the options that I've made as well so you've got a bit more of an idea about what sort of thing you can do here. So I'm just coming up the screen here a little bit. I think I've tipped my camera a little bit. Maybe that's what I've done. Press down. Oh, finger in icing sugar, then press down. I'll retrain myself here. Right, press down. There we go. That's better. Peel that back. Nice little flower. Right, let's have a look at our decorations. So let's bring this one in first. I'm going to put a bit of a red filling in this, so pink and red cake. So again, we'll just take, take some of the red and we'll just roll it out so it's a bit sort of random. Take our paintbrush with a little bit of water again and we'll just come along here. And we'll just pop that there. Have I done enough? Ooh, just, just about. We'll push our filling down a little bit, squash it out a little bit. There we go, like so. Got our filling, and then we'll stick our heart on as well so we don't lose that. Now, I probably would say stick it on with royal icing because it's a little bit heavier and I'm not pressing this down quite so far. So, you want to just put that on there so it doesn't fall off. There we go. Right, so I made up some brown icing that's got uh, royal icing that's got a little bit of extra liquid in it so it's a little bit more runny although having said that it's been in this bag so the ends probably got blocked there we go sometimes when you leave piping bags lying around the nozzles tend to block which is completely normal so don't be surprised if this happens and then before I launch into this let me find my beloved sprinkles because I don't want to do this and then oh no they're right next to me of course they are Right, sprinkles at the ready. Right, so then you can take your icing and you can make a lovely drip just by following along. Like so. There we go. Turn it around that way and you'll see it a bit better then. And then we can take some of these little sprinkles before it settles and just pop some of those on. Like so. And then obviously we'll enhance the cake with a tiny bit of painting because we can. And we will get hold of some white. Now I've got black in my paintbrush at the moment so I'll just clean that out because I don't want to end up painting everything the wrong colour. go we're switching from dark to light you've got to be pretty sore otherwise i think it's going to be gray isn't it so a little bit of white paint and then we can just put a little sort of line on the heart little bit of marking there on the cupcakes or the cake slice so that's what i did yesterday one i spent a little bit more time on yesterday and it kind of gives you a bit more of an idea of what it should look like although that's not bad that's pretty good going for me to do that live I'm quite happy with that and then this one here let's move that there we'll do this one here next and again I'm going to just take my brown icing and I'm going to come down here let's turn it around that way it's easier actually to do it sideways and just make a nice thick kind of drip drip it as far as you like you don't have to drip it at all if you don't want to but I think it looks quite nice to have a bit of a drip going on and then we'll put some more sprinkles on so these are our Kelly's white sprinkles that we do with absolutely everything there we go and then we'll take our little flowers and our hearts and we'll start in the middle we'll put a little heart between the flowers shall we Go. we'll do that on either side and then what we'll do is we'll use our royal icing just to put the rest of it on 
as it goes round the top because it goes round the top here that's why you've got this kind of extra bit up here because otherwise it does look a bit weird but it's there to kind of support the rest of the decorations around the rest of the cake so it looks like you've got the centre of the cake available otherwise it does look a bit weird or I'm a couple bit short oh no I'm not going to make that oh no I will I'll do an extra flower let me do an extra flower not going to take me a minute or even better what I'll do is I'll pick that up I'll move you over there oh no we won't you've got brown on no ignore me <sighs> I'll do an extra flower <laughs> Oh, there's always one, isn't there, right? Let's do an extra flower. I've got one that worked out perfectly next to me, so I'll bring that one out in a second. We'll have an extra flower in there. And then if you take your either your royal icing or if you're feeling extra clever with all the fiddly bits, then you could put in little white perels, but I'm just gonna pipe little centres in these white in these pink flowers like so and then you can always take your white paint and just again put little markings along here like that and a little just a little mark on the heart it just makes it look a bit brighter somehow I don't really know why it does that maybe it's meant to be like light glistening or something but it just looks a little bit better if there's a little bit of white on there so there we go so that's another one of those mini cakes now I'm going to attempt to put these on cakes I'm going to have to use green I think um or I could use white I'd rather use white I think so let's do white so we'll start a new bag I think that's the best thing to do isn't it and we'll get what should we have? Let's go random and go 18 again because that's the one we like. Cut the end off. I think I've got enough of that filling cream left. I'll go and have a look in a minute. And we'll put these onto the cupcakes and then you can see what they're meant to sit like. Right, what have we got left? Oh, but we've got a little bit left, so that's good. Let's grab some of that. I took had this wonderful idea of taking all the palette knives home, and since then you can imagine the chaos I'm now in. <laughs> Why did I do that? I was not thinking when I did that the other day. I need to find a spoon, and I know I've got one here somewhere. Right, let me go and investigate over at the sink because I've definitely got one over there. Let's go and grab one from over there. Right, perfect. Let's load up the bag with some, we'll put some white frosting in this time. There we go, magic. Okay, let's do two cupcakes. And then what we'll do, instead of doing grass, we'll do swirls like that. So same nozzle different action so we're going round in circles now now the buttercream again a little bit stiff at the start because it needs my hand heat to soften it I'll just put that down while I just adjust my bag I'm going to move you up out of the way in case I accidentally put my on top of you because that would be no good um let me go back to these cookie cutters so the cake slice and the drip mini are together they are a set so this and this are a set okay so if you want to get these two you will need to get them as a set this is available on its own and the large one is available on its own but because these two are new i've put them together so cake slice and drip cake are one set all right, so when you go on the website, you'll see what I mean. Because I thought, well, we're just doing like an afternoon tea set. Oh, it's making my hand sore today. Right, let me hold it down here a bit. And I'm squeezing it too hard now. <laughs> That's because I'm at funny angles today. There we go. 
so you can pipe a sort of swirly thing going on there and then we'll take hold of we'll take hold of this one because it's dry and we'll pop that on there like so I'm just going to swirl the outside edge here because it's not quite covered and that would drive me crazy otherwise oh lovely look at that that's really nice isn't it let's move that one over there so we don't get in the mess and then we'll get another cupcake and we'll do the same again so we'll round in circles So if anyone's thinking, oh, her buttercream's white, I'm actually using frosting from Sweet Success. So that's what it is. It is a dairy-free buttercream. It does smell really nice, actually. And I've done a few cakes in it, so it does work if you want to do a dairy-free cake. It's very nice. And it's also white, which is quite helpful. Okay, into the middle and then we'll grab the one I did yesterday because I think that one is a little bit more organized than the one I did today there we go but I am going to da, 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 paint I'm just looking for a brush I've got in a muddle here let's put that lid over there so I don't put my arm in it there we go there's my brush and we'll just put a little bit of white going along there and like so there we go two lovely little cake toppers just like that nice and easy to do if you've got the this particular mold here tiny decorations it works brilliantly with these little molds so this is the key so if you've got this great also the bow mold is very good if you want to use that or as I said to you earlier if you have plunger cutters and you want to apply those to these types of molds then you can use those as well the little hearts the little flowers all those kinds of things so I was off screen there a little bit um, little tiny flowers to do all of this kind of stuff if you don't have the tiny decoration mold these are really good as well and you can pipe whatever you like as well so for example if you're doing the wedding cake one you can just use piping nozzles um, just to get similar effects Look, to attach things like sprinkles that always works really well um, and then you've got like a full range of um, different things you can do to decorate those particular cakes I also did this one which is sort of a bows with tails so I did that as well this is very in at the moment there's lots and lots of cakes with bows and tails on them um, hence why we've got our red heart one coming out because that's very on trend at the moment um, it's also probably on trend back in the 1970s so <laughs> when I look at these cakes I think well I kind of remember doing something like that in the 1970s but anyway there you go um, the last thing I'm going to show you I'm not going to um, dem it today I'm just going to show you because I'm going to the then dem it another week is the mini birthday bear and the only reason I'm showing you this is because this little chap um, came out the same time as these so I'm going to move those back for a second and we've got the little birthday bear and it works on the same principle as these with a drip so it's a little bear with um, holding a birthday cake all cut out I actually did sort of a, a hatch design with this one and then we have the mini version of it here which is the little mini bear cookie cutter which again is big enough to sit on top of a cupcake it's cupcake size and again I just made a little bow um, and followed the same principle as the cakes that I've just done but I'm going to put together a little TikTok on him so that you'll be able to see him done very very quickly but he's called the birthday bear so if you want to have a go at doing the birthday bear he holds a cake that's his um, thing because obviously all the other bears that we've got one holds a uh, heart one holds an Easter egg this one is the birthday one and he holds the birthday cake um so i thought i would show you him today as well i'm not going to deb him today but i think he's on tiktok already i'm going to go and check um if not he would have been on one of my previous youtube videos or as any of the bear ones do they're very straightforward to do but i will do him as a separate item 
on another edition of Let's Shop anyway, so you can have a look. So we've done an awful lot of bits and pieces this afternoon. I'm going to just bring a few bits onto screen. I'm going to take my camera up a bit where you probably see lots of chaos. <laughs> Uh, it's not too bad. I mean, I've had it worse, to be honest, so it could be worse. Uh, let's move this out of the way. Let's get my green buttercream over there. There we go. And we don't have to look at my paint palette. I'm going to just move that there. Right, we move stuff around a bit. So we have had, there's the birthday bear. There's the birthday bear. There's another birthday bear. I'm going to take those away for a second. We'll bring... Oh, yes, you can see those. That's good. Right. Those are the cupcakes. Put those in that way. There we go. Those are the new cupcakes. So that's the cookie cutter that goes with that one. And then the cookie cutter that goes with that one. And then that one. So you can see those all there. These are the wedding cake ones. Put three of those together. And again, there was a wedding cake cookie cutter that goes with those, which is amongst something I've moved. Oh yeah, there it is. That's good. So that goes in there. And then we've got the pet bowl with the new pet bowl cookie cutter. Let's move that out of the way. And then finally, we have got all our cats and dogs, which I'm just going to bring in there. And you should be able to see those now. There you go. So that is a huge amount of new cookie cutters that we've got coming out today. Um, I will do some more videos this week, especially to do with the cats and dogs so people understand them. But it is an extremely simple way of making a cat that sits on top of a cupcake. But I will I'll do some more videos this week so you can see those. And then these are the mini drip and cake slice as a set. Mini flower, eight petal, mini. There's also a large one available as well. Mini pet bowl. We do the large pet bowl as well. The cat's tail and the dog's tail and the mini wedding cake. And then also the bear, the birthday bear, mini and large as well. So there you go. I'm going to put you up there because you might have more chance of being seen. <laughs> and then what I'll do is I will take a massive pitch of these. And then when you come to look back on that shop, you'll be able to find them really easily. And then hopefully that will make it a lot easier for some of you to find the instructions for some of our cookie cutters. Right, I'm back. <laughs> OK, so for those of you that have just joined us, um, you will be able to watch this back once it's finished, because obviously we're live at the moment. You will be able to go back and see us either here or on YouTube. So my YouTube channel is at Tracy Man Cakes. You need to go into the live section to find this video. So we're not on the main listed bit. You will need to go into lives and you will see all the video appearing up there. So the cake school this morning, we talked about the new Swiss meringue buttercream class that we've got coming out so we have got the Bridgerton themed one for those of you that like Netflix and Bridgerton this one comes out on the 16th of May so that will be coming out very soon and it will be part of a set of three it will belong to this set here which is the Swiss meringue buttercream with the cherries so you'll find it in there with the heart shaped one as well which I don't think I've got a picture of but I do have right next to me and as I'm wearing red today I will coordinate myself beautifully with this cake there we go. Da -na -na -na. <laughs> I won't let it slip off here, but if it does, I shall laugh. Um, there we go. So that's the heart shaped cake. This one's coming out in June. So this will be part of that set of three cakes and it will be available to gold and sugar craft members. So if you are either of those two, these will be added as we go. But I love this cake. I have to say I absolutely love it it's very on trend everybody so that's what we've got to do we've got to stay stay with these trends um then we've got our guinea pig cake that's coming out on the 11th of may and then most importantly and coming up on tuesday is how to price your cakes again so that's another opportunity to join that class if you've already joined it um it will need to be signed up for the new edition we're not repeating the how to price your cakes in the old group this is a new group so if you want to join me on tuesday evening at seven o'clock it's ten pounds for a ticket go to the cake school go into facebook live and click on how to price your cakes pay ten pound for your ticket and then i will send you a link and then you will be asked to join a facebook group you will accept that i'll get you all together in the group and then i'll be live on tuesday evening
Most importantly, please don't leave it till the last minute, because if you do, it makes it very, very difficult for me to get you into the group whilst I'm still live. So once you've had your link, ask to join the group straight away, please. Um, and then let's shop this morning. We've had loads. Where's my button? There we go. Loads of new um, cake. There we go. Loads of new cake toppers that have come out today. The cat's tail, the dog's tail, um, the birthday bear, the mini um, this is the mini cake slice it and cake together. That's a set. That's on its own. That's the mini eight petal. The dog bowl's on its own. The mini pet bowl. I, I called it pet bowl. It's not a dog bowl, is it? Cause my cat's got one that looks like this. Um, and the little mini wedding cake there. And obviously the rest of the animals are all on there. So we've had an extremely busy afternoon. Note that I say afternoon because obviously we went live at 12.30. So if you're joining us at quarter past two and you think I've been live since 10 o'clock this morning, you'll be wrong because <laughs> I started later today. And if I was starting at 10 and still live at quarter past two, I'd have no voice left. Left. um so that's it for this week's edition of let's shop cake live the shop is open if you want to go and purchase any of the cookie cutters today they are all on there and we do have them in stock so please go ahead and go shopping and enjoy yourself on there um i won't be back next week because i am i'm here all of next week but next weekend i am going off to northern ireland so i am going across to northern ireland for a very short break of about three days so i will be going over there uh, so i won't be back next saturday but we will put on facebook when we're going to be live next it will appear as an event post don't forget as well that you must uh, if you click going or interested facebook will remind you it's really easy um, it doesn't commit you it reminds you um, so if you do want to join me again for another edition of let's shop don't forget to press that button because it will help you and then you'll know where i am um, i have just returned from Kugenhof. i'm just going to say that very quickly which is the netherlands and I have been to the tulip fields and they were lovely. Uh, so for those of you, again, that follow me on Instagram and Facebook, you will see that I've been out and about in the tulip fields and they were phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. So I'm sure I've been inspired to do some more tulip cakes at some point. So we'll get those in as well. But um, as we're heading rapidly now towards the summer, um, we're starting to focus on some of the other cakes and bits and pieces that we need to get done. So you will see a few more changes coming on um, as we go through the year. But do please come and join us on the cake school or go to the shop and purchase some bits and pieces and make some lots of bits and pieces for you for this summer. But thank you very much to everyone that has tuned in today. Again, if you have any questions, don't forget to please get in touch with me via the websites or the Facebook page and I will do everything I can to try and help you. Other than that, I hope you all have a lovely